everybody, welcome back to another edition of Breaking Bread. I'm Herman Morris Lomas Brown. Hey, the other thing is, you know what? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I know last time we didn't have our microphones, but we got them today. We moving on up. Hey, moving on up. Like who? <laughs> like George and Weezy Jefferson. There it is. <laughs> hey, last time we broke down wide receivers. Today we're breaking down the big fellas. There we're breaking it down is. the linemen. There so, it hey, look, we got Panay Soul. Hey, okay. break them down for us. I know everybody wants to know about them. So, you know, Herman and them pride themselves on being athletic guys. But us big fellas, we got to be athletes. And you can see the big guy, Panay Soul. Look. It's important for linemen to be able to get out in space. Why? Because of the sc quick screen games, the funnel screens, the quick games that the NFL is going to these days. He does an excellent job of being able to get out there, cover up on this DB, get that uh, wide receiver opportunity to get upfield. That's going to be real important as he moves to this next level because, again, you see the funnel game, you see the screen game becoming a big part of the NFL offenses these days, and these guys got to be able to work out in space. And one thing I noticed on that play too, Lo, is that he did the swim move, but he did the swim move making the guy go inside because the play was outside there so that he go. could get upfield to get even another block. Some guys get tied up on that block, but I noticed Panay Sewell, he ended up just kind of guiding that guy down the line of scrimmage. Exactly, and that's what you want to do. Preferably, you want to go behind the guy so he won't recognize, go behind the D lineman, so he won't recognize what type of play is going on. And like I say, and you got to be an actor too, Harm. You got to have your Denzel Washington working <laughs> too because you got to fool these guys a lot of times. Now, again, we bought for a guy wearing number 20, and that guy can make some magical things happen. But what's important, especially for these offensive linemen, is to be able to give these running backs two ways to go. Either they could press the whole front side or they could be able to stick their foot in the ground and get backside. So it's very important for offensive linemen to be able to cover up on the backside of these guys, run, and the most important thing that he'll have to work on is getting his head across the bow meaning getting his head in front of that defense alignment so the running back can push it up front if he has to keep pushing it up front. That's something that he's going to learn, and it's also a technique thing. But again, you want your offensive linemen to be able to, on the back side, get your running backs, either they could go front side or, like I say, they could stick their foot in the ground and be able to get back side. Nice job of him just staying on the defensive lineman and just riding him down. All right, and then being able to, when you're saying basically come down, when he sees that guy take a hard line down inside, is getting his head across his bow exactly. to cut him off and hold Exactly, there. unless the, the play is a design cutback play, then you wouldn't mind pushing the guy down. But preferably, you want to have your head on the front of that defensive lineman. Now here again, Okay, we're talking about pass blocking, and we know that's where you make your bread and butter at in the NFL. Right here, he does a great job of passing this game off. It's an ET game, meaning the defensive end is coming inside and the defensive tackle is going to come outside. But to be successful right there, he has to keep his shoulders square. Keep his shoulders square. Why? Because he can use his peripherals to see this other guy, the defensive tackle, coming to the outside. If your shoulders are turned any kind of way, you can't use your peripherals and be able to pick that up. He kept his shoulders square. He passed the guy down the line of scrimmage, and he was sitting there waiting for the defensive tackle to come across. That's going to be really, really important again on the next level because that's how we make our money up front, pass, um, giving these guys an opportunity to stand back there in the pocket and find guys like you. So that was a great job by him and the left guard to be able to pass that game off. NFL, those guys are a little different animal, man. They got games for you. So you could get a TE, you could get a linebacker coming in there. By keeping your shoulders square, you'll be able to pick up anything that comes on the inside. Now, I'm looking real hard at this, even as a wide receiver, because we have to block. I'm looking at his hand position. That was yes. one thing. And another thing, I'm looking at his feet. So if you tell me a little bit about his feet, I noticed that, you know, they teach us not to cross over, not right. to get them too close because it throws us off balance. And that's not any different than really what we're taught a lot of in our routes, but also in our blocking technique. Right. So, Herm, yeah, you can be strong up top, but that's not going to help you. Once again, like you're saying, you got to have a foundation under you. You get your feet too close as an offensive lineman is almost like walking on a tightrope. You don't have any balance. That's why you see a lot of linemen on the ground. 
He keeps his feet on them. He takes the proper 45 degree drop. He keeps his base, shoulder width base. And again, that makes you a lot stronger. You're able to move from side to side if anything comes that way. So it's a great job with the young guy. You don't want to turn your shoulders. Once you turn your shoulders as offensive lineman, the advantage quickly goes to the defensive lineman. And one other thing you told me, you, you're saying about the positioning of their hands too, because there's a technique that you like that you try and recommend. Some people yeah. like to punch and reset. Right. And then you said, but you like to get your hands on right. and then. That dance, bro. You, it's like you're in the club. So right, when I, when I get my hands on them, we doing the cha-cha, huh? <laughs> yeah. Because you All got right, to use your feet. You got to use your feet then. Like you say, in the pros, you, you, gonna, you can't outstrengthen these guys up top. So, right, you got to use your feet with you. So once I get, used to get my hands on the guy, I like to keep them there because these guys are so good with counter moves. You keep your hands there, and you just use your feet. If they want to go inside, you step inside. They want to go outside, you do that. They want to spin move on you, you just fill them, and you just keep your base. But that's what he's going to learn. He'll quickly learn that in the league, that it's not all about just your upper body strength. You have to use your whole body in this. And it's something that he'll right. pick up. He'll definitely right. pick that up. Now here, again, that's how we make our money, pass protecting right here. And again, once I was, like I was talking about earlier, right, Hearn, you want to get your hands in. Now, if I go back to that play right there, right there, if we reverse that back, just a tad bit right there, that body position in the good position to be in because he's leaning. All his mm -hmm. weight is coming forward. He's leaning. So a good defensive end, he's going to counter you. He's either going to hump you or he's either going to try to spin back on you because all your weight is going forward and it's going to be hard for you to stop yourself from falling over. So again, you want to be sitting back. You want to have that base, which he doesn't have, right? Feet are together right there. And you want to have that base where you at the 45 degree angle. Anytime you turn your shoulders like this way towards the sideline, you've automatically given that defensive end the advantage. Like I say, a really good defensive end, which he'll be facing every week in the pros, he's either going to counter by going back to the inside with a spin move, or he can even just slap that shoulder and really rip him to the outside because he doesn't have strength with that outside foot. So those are one of the things, hey, I struggled with that in my rookie year too. And you're going to struggle with it. It's just something you have to be cautious of and you have to work on it each and every day to get that technique down to where you're not turning your shoulders to the sideline and you're keeping the base. That's a very good set right there. Again, the finish is a, not particularly where you want it to be at on the pro level, but he's such a dominant guy in college, you could get away with it. I love the initial set, 45 degrees. He's setting out on the guy and he's getting his hands out on the guy. The other thing linemen can't do is they can't get their hands or let the D linemen get their, themselves into your body. We you want to keep, yeah, you want to keep them D linemen out as far as you can. They want to get close to you because then they can work you any way that they want to. We want to keep them guys as far away from them so we can use our feet against them. Hey, I was going to ask you, what's the difference? All right, you're a tall guy, you're six five, six six lineman. When yeah. you're coming out, and all of a sudden now, you know, there's a variation of height that happens. You know, you can you get those rush ends. You get right. a linebacker that walks to the line of scrimmage. Right. You got speed rushers. You got guys that are tall. They're stocky. You got guys that are wide. I mean, so is that technique going to change? I mean, I'm, I would imagine a guy that comes in high is one thing. The guy right. that comes in low and has speed, what does that do to a guy that's 331 pounds, 6'3"? That's a good question. So the framework of your body, that's where I want to work at on the framework of my body. And even if he's a guy that's coming in low, right, Herm, he's going to have to raise up to make his move. Once he raises up to make his move, then he's giving me his chest. That's when I get my hands out on him and stuff. But you're right, he's going to see different types. He's going to get the guy that likes to do a lot of shake and bake. Therefore, you got to stay on the inside half of that guy. Once he get through all that shaking and baking, then again, you're looking for the framework of the body. You get a tall guy that want to come up automatically, that's going to help you. But you got these squatty body guys that, again, <laughs> that'll come at you. Then they're going to give it to you. But you got the, your landmark and your target has to be the same, and it's right there in that body frame. Squatty body, huh? Yeah, squatty body, man. Squatty body, I, man. I played against a lot of little squatty body guys, <laughs> man. Some tough little guys to play against. Right here again. And 
I heard you talk when we talked last week about sticking your foot in the ground, especially for oh, yeah. receivers when you tell them to stick their foot. It's the same way for offensive linemen. Again, he has to stick his foot in the ground because the guy, right, they're running a, a T, uh, ET game again. So the guy's coming inside. So it was important for Sewell to stick his foot in the ground, to ride him down, keeping those shoulders square. So when he, when that guy came back like, around, the D tackle came around, he was able to pick him up. But that's just as important. That front foot is so important in your technique because remember, Herm, you setting back. So once you see this guy come this way, bam, if you don't stick your foot in the ground, you're going to automatically give him an inside go on you towards the quarterback. That's when you get split, and there would have been no way that his offensive guard would have been able to pick that guy up. So it's a nice job of him riding him down, sticking his foot in the ground, feeling it, feeling it, feeling it, bam, then coming off late. The other thing is you want to come off late. You want to ride this guy, guy down as much as you can before you come off. Remember, you can wait on this guy to come around, but you want to make sure your guard has this guy, got this guy in control, and bam, you can come off late on this guy right here. So that was an excellent job between those two right there. And believe me, the guys in the NFL, they practice this. D-tackles, D-linemen, they practice this all day long. So they got some of them do delayed ETs. Some of them do uh, ETs right off the bat. So it's going to be, um, he's going to have to really recognize which one is coming at him, if it's a delay ET or if it's a regular ET. So good job on his part on this uh, to recognize, ride the guy down, come off late. Don't rush to come off. Make sure you got the inside secured before you come off. You now I'm thinking about this, and I wanted to ask you a real deep question. And this one is pretty technical. Mm -hmm. uh, in college, is there a better way to hold in the NFL than it is in Man, college? Because I've noticed he's got to get bruh, his whole technique down too. Bruh. So look, you got to be able to conceal that there baby. There it is. So you got to have some Denzel Washington <laughs> in you, Hearn. You got to be all right, actor. all right, all right. There all right. you go. You got to be an actor, man. You got to learn how to hold. I tell people the lineman that all the time. That's a technique, man. Holding right. is a technique. You got to learn how to do it. I was good at it yeah. too, Hearn. Yeah. Good at it. Well, you, you got big hands though, yeah, man. So man. yeah. So yeah, you got to. You learn, had to go lay hands man. on them. There you go. Lay some hands on them. <laughs> I had to lay hands on them. But it's a technique, man, and you learn how to hold. You know, people be shocked to hear me say that, but you but have it's, to It's part of the game. Hold. I mean, there everybody you know, wants man. to say it. If anyone's watched the NFL, you know we all complain on every single play. Yeah. Somebody's holding. <laughs> the defensive back is always complaining that wide receiver's holding. Yeah. Defensive end is always complaining that a lineman's holding. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's all the same. And they so good. Game. They so good, man. Hey. You got to hold a little bit. They good, man. This well, I appreciate the honesty. The yeah, it's the top, man. You can't go no higher. The NFL, this is the cream of the crop right here. Well, that's Panay Sewell. Hey, man, mm -hmm. I appreciate you breaking them down. Oh, yeah. You're getting broken down, man. By Listen, this is not just an all-pro, not just a pro bowler, future Hall of Famer, but a professional football Hall of Fame. Hey, Lo, thank you. Oh, yeah. Breaking bread. I hey, you. appreciate you liking our channel. So go ahead and click that button if you like what you saw. Hey, I know we got two, actually, dislikes. Go on and hit that like button. We'll, we'll give you a check. We'll give you a second chance to make it right. But uh, thanks again. Join us for the next session of Breaking Bread with Herman and Lomas, and we'll see you next time.